All right. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another exciting episode of The Legend of the Three Kingdoms. Yes, this is my custom D&D campaign set in my messed up, made up world. Uh, and th these are some of the players that uh, were dumb enough to leave their characters' lives in, in my hands. So, uh, to get right into the nitty-gritty of it, uh, recently after being acquitted of all the uh, charges made against them by the Sanguinian government. Uh, the king of Valakovia uh, sent them on a mission back to Sanguinius to discover more about these rifts uh, that they've uh, encountered and f figure out who knows about them, who is making them and hopefully f find a way to keep the vampires f from getting uh, a pretty significant advantage over v Valakovia and Fenrich. Uh, on the way out, uh, they dealt with Vala's um, shedding problem We'll call it. It's a little teething. Um, and uh, also f found out that the way they were acquitted is a another group of people was accused and f found guilty of the their c crimes and was p put to death. Which one of the f families of said people claimed her husband was innocent. So as you guys were going, you uh, eventually came to the crossing between the Temple of the Wise Sage and uh, House Merovingian, but weren't able to get through the crossing there due to some vampire complaints so you decided to head down the wall uh, and try and find another uh, crossing uh, into Sanguinius. On your first night of camping you s started hearing strange th th things and Vala first went out to ch check on it and found some f fairy friends uh, who wanted to play some games. Uh, afterwards, uh, Argenta, Lillian, and Henri went out to find her, dealt with their own issues, and eventually were able to find Vala and kind of barter with the f fairies to get Vala released after Vala was able to beat the game she had been thrust into. Afterwards, uh, the fairies kind of started explaining the uh, what had brought them there. They're technically from the Feywild, which as far as you guys know is completely cut off from the prime material plane. Uh, so these creatures being here is s s strange. And they made mention of a very bright light and then being in a s strange place and just trying to deal with being here while also wanting to go home. Uh, and that's where we l left it off uh, last uh, t time. So after hearing all that s stuff from the fairies, uh, did you guys have any questions f f for them that you wanted to 
ask or a- anything. I thought we uh, were going to help them. I thought that's what we were saying last time. Cause they said something about... Uh, I can't remember right now. And then we were saying that we were going to try and help them. Help them get back home. Yeah. That's what they are. Right. They were going to sh- kind of show us where this all happened at. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so, uh, the f- fairy leader you've been t- speaking with s- says, I can t- take you where we appeared. It's very c- close. We figured we should c- keep our c- camp nearby in c- case we could g- go back. Uh, this might be something. Is it late right now, or is it? Uh, it was middle of the night when this started. At this point, uh, the the sky itself is just barely starting to to lighten. That kind of pre dawn thing, where just everything kind of has a glow to it. You think the sun will probably rise in an hour or two? I know I'm fine, but I know the rest of my companions need sleep. Yeah, I'm a. Uh, I'm a little burnt out. If you want, you can s- stay in, in uh, the g- g- guest t- tent. We don't really have beds, but we can m- make s- something f- for you. They're okay with that. I don't sleep, so I could just stay out here with you guys. Yeah, from your own recollection, Liliane and Argenta, you would have done this too. Um, You think you're probably at this point about 20, 30 minutes from your campsite. Because you traveled really weird ways in the forest, so you you can't go directly. You're probably like a 10-minute walk away, but because you took such a weird path, you have to follow your footsteps back to get there. It's up to you guys. What do you want to do? Fine either way. Let's stay here while we're going to help them. Yeah, I mean, we made it while we're helping them. Yeah, what's the worst that can happen, right? Hmm. Why did you say that? So you guys kind of go into the uh, tent, and when you get in there, you you see how it looks like three really nice comfy beds Hmm. and a chair. (laughs) I'm not going to go in the the guest tent since I don't need to sleep. I'm just going to be out there relaxing for an hour. Okay. Just so I can at least heal up in case something happens. I am going to fall asleep. Okay. As yep. soon as you go over to the bed and you kind of lie down on it, you go th- through the, the, the top of the bed and fall about s- six inches, just enough for you know to get that little stop in your heart. And then you feel this crunching f- feeling as you land on a relatively large pile of leaves. Large enough that it actually buries you somewhat in it. And as you look up, you can see the outlines of the bed illusion above you. Ha ha. Very funny. See, we made you beds. Uh, From inside the illusion, I just... 
raise one hand up with one digit and then pull it back down. I'll go to bed on leave. Why not? <laughs> Can't okay. come north. Yeah, it's not, it'd be... It's not the worst sleep you've ever had. It ain't great. And when you wake up, you're covered in just leaved debris. But you s- sleep well enough. I would have been talking with the fairies all night to figure out more about what we're getting ourselves into. Where, what questions would you like to a- ask? Uh, do they know what potentially sent them through? Sent them to this strange land? Are there any interesting or strange creatures we're going to have to deal with? So we'll just, one at a time. Uh, first question. Uh, yes, they know exactly what brought them here. It, it was a b- bright light. Okay. And then something that f- felt weird. Do they know if the area we're going to is going to have any interesting creatures or strange surprises for us? Uh, yes, it will. Okay. And then the rest of the night, I'll just be kind of facing towards where they're sleeping. Keep an eye on, see if anyone goes in, etc. You do every so often over the eight hours that they're asleep. Uh, you, you do every so often see a fairy wander over with a mischievous look on their face. <clears throat> and then the head fairy kind of reprimand them a little and sh- sh- shoo them all off. I think Henri might be the only person in this party that actually likes these fairies. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Argenta Val and Lilane, uh, when you guys awake, you feel fairly well rested. Um, and you can smell from outside this smell of uh, breakfast. As I uh, get up all covered in leaves, Mm -hmm. I'll use press the digitation to clean myself off. Okay. Controversially, I'm going to take an empty vial, take a handful of dirt, and fill the vial with it. Okay. Does that count as a rest for us? Yep, that's a long rest. Okay. Do you want us to level up now or later? Sure, it's fine. You would now all be level 888. So, uh, you guys going to come out for breakfast or what? Um, Yes, I'll head it out that way. So, Vala is the first to come out. uh, uh, Henri, as you see Vala come out, she looks remarkably pristine for where she slept. (coughs) You notice... She doesn't have a stray hair out of place. There's no leave debris on her. She just comes out looking ready for the day. Argenta, on the other hand, comes out. Hair is kind of mangled. There's leave pieces all all over her. And on her face, she's got one really big black circle around one eye. The other one, there's like a blue diamond shape. And she has this really garish green lipstick all over around her lips. <laughs> and as uh, Lillian c- c- comes out, she has this w- w- looks like a massive t- t- tattoo of a spider web on the side of her face that p- blows in the w- wind. And she uh, has bright purple lipstick all around her mouth. And uh, her other eye uh, looks like a poodle. (laughs) Oh, no. I just 
point, I just look at the nearest fairy and say, well done. And the nearest fairy goes, I don't know what you mean. Do, do, do. Flies off. <clears throat> so, so as you guys come out, you do see a decent sized stump with a plate of cooked meats and bread and then some flagons of something. You can't really tell what it is, but it's fruity. It doesn't seem to have any alcohol in it. I'm just, before I taste anything, I'm poking it. (laughs) As you poke it, you burn your finger a little bit because it's piping hot. It doesn't seem like an illusion. No. Generally, illusions can't burn you. I don't drink anything. Okay. Uh, I will eat and drink of everything at the table. Sample a little bit of this and that. As you're sitting down and eating, you eventually glance over at Argenta and see the canvas that is her face. Then you look over and see Lillian's the same. And you think you think back a little bit. Well, press the digitation did take a little more effort than you thought it should Hmm. so you think you probably had something similar but got rid of it Argenta you seem to have a little something right there I kind of rub it and I see green on my thumb and I just (laughs) I I would take care of that for you but it would involve some arcane bullshit (laughs) Listen, if arcane bullshit is necessary to counter this, then do it. <laughs> I will uh, use press digitation to clean off Argenta, and then look at Lillianne, and then uh, I'll cast press digitation to clean off Lillianne too. Uh, <laughs> I'll start eating. Okay, so you guys have a n- n- nice meal. Uh, after you're all done, the lead fairy come, comes up and say, says are you, you are ready to c- c- go? I am. Yeah. yeah. Alright, f- follow me. And she f- flies off at an extremely f- fast p- pace. A couple seconds go by. You c- can't even see her anymore. She comes back. C- c- come on, s- slow pokes. C- keep up. C- goes off again. Okay, I'll run after her. I'll run after Argenta. Yeah, damn. Uh, Ar- Argenta, r- roll me a s- survival ch- ch- check. Okay. Is this in a forest? Y- y- yes. Okay. Natural 20. All right. You have n- no problem c- uh, keeping tr- track of her. You have a l- little issue c- keeping up because she's really fast Um, but you notice she keeps weaving in and out and doing all these strange kind of side paths and that and as you figure out roughly where she's going you're able to keep pace with her simply by not following her directly and just keeping in a straight line line. and eventually she stops doing all the curly cues and everything and after about 20 minutes or so, you come to a clearing that is off, is is the best way to describe it. As you get close to it, your skin feels like it's buzzing slightly. Some of you might even like slap your uh, arm or neck or something thinking there's a bug on you. There's nothing there. And as you get closer, you first thing you notice is the clearing you're in looks gorgeous. It's 
got f flowers all over it. Um, the tr trees on the outside are amazing. They have flowers with these bright, incredibly v vibrant c colors, some of which you have a hard time even placing what c color they are. It's, it's almost like c color in general has been turned up to 11 here. And you just see this incredible amount of life and nature surrounding you. Can I go up to a flower and make sure it's real? Sure. Just want to touch it. Roll me an investigation check. Ah, my phone locked right when you said that. Um... Oops, not that. I gotta click that. Uh, 15. Alright, looking at it, um, this is not a f flower you're aware of. Um, it's, 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 it's not a, a, uh, species you've ever s seen before. And as you look at it, it doesn't seem c quite right. Like it, looks like a flower and it's incredibly beautiful but as you kind of look for you know, the ba basic p p parts of a f f flower um uh like it the, the flower looks like it was drawn more than it was grown and there's so much of it that looks very pretty but just seems very impractical so at first you think obviously this is a some 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 sort of illusion, but as you reach down, you pick it up and it's, it's real. I don't think we're in Valakovia anymore. <laughs> um, does this remind? Uh, I mean, does this look like what we experienced when we were traveling on the horses, when it seemed like we were in the Feywild? Uh, k kind of. That was your k kind of first ex experience with it, so you're not a hundred percent sure, but it's definitely something y unique. Mm. In the, uh, no one f from the Three Kingdoms has been to the f Feywild in five hundred years. So you're quite a few generations removed from anyone that would have knowledge of it. Would I know be a great description of the Feywild? What I know about the Fey? You know about Fey creatures? Because there are some on the Prime Material Plane. Um, but as far as the Feywild, you would have a s slightly better d description of it f from uh, your training as a blood hunter. However, even w w with that, you uh, again, the, your t trainer is, you know, qu quite a few g generations r removed from anyone that's seen or been to the Feywild. So even you got very l limited d descriptions. Most um, of your knowledge is, is in practical th things, yeah. how to avoid certain tra traps, th things like th that. I will flag down one of the fairies. You only have one. The leader's the only one that came with you. Um, excuse me. Do these flowers look familiar? Yes. Are these from your home? Yes. Are we in your home now? No. This is just a part of your home that came with you. I guess we don't really know. This has never happened to a a a any of us. Mm. Uh, well, they're talking. I want to look for any anything watching us. Sure, make a perception check. Uh, is this in direct sunlight? Uh, yeah, the c clearing w w would be. Oh, uh, three plus four. That's a seven. It is remarkably bright where you are. 
And so as you look around, you have to kind of sh- sh- shade your eyes a-, a little bit. And you just have a hard time f- focusing on t- too many things. Uh, but you don't see anyone or anything that would be w- w- watching. Hmm. Well, boys, I think we need to... Or, ladies. I, uh... <laughs> I to say, <laughs> only d- d- dude here. Um, well, there's only only one dude. Um, I hate to say this, but I think we need to start looking for tunnels. The fire well, looks, me, looks you, at you. Me, and goes, uh, Why? We've encountered something like this before, and there was something underground. Hmm. Do you know of any tunnels around here? And you see her get this perplexed look on her face, and she starts drawing in the air. And she's mumbling to herself, but when you try and listen, it's gibberish to you. Finally, Hmm. she goes, there's no tunnels, but there's a a bad tree. We Hmm. stayed away from it because it's just a bad tree. There's so many good trees. There are. Unfortunately, I think we need to see this bad tree. No, it's a bad tree. You won't like like it. You'll get sick. I'm certain we won't like it, but I I I think I think we need to go take a look at it, just Mm. to make sure that that's not what's causing this. Go ahead and roll me a persuasion check. Oh, thank goodness. 17. Okay, so you looks at, she looks at you and you, you can see she's kind of fighting with herself at the moment. She finally goes, fine. <clears throat> but if, if you all... T- die as our f- f- first new f- friends here I'm going to be m- mad I will be very mad too <laughs> okay it's, it's over there and as she points you see a really heavily wooded area and it's at th- this point you realize uh, uh, e- even you Henri when you looked around f- for whatever reason y- you never l- looked in that specific area. And even now, Val, you kind of realize you, as you're looking here, it's almost like you've never seen this part of the clearing, despite being there for 10 or 15 minutes. Mm. As you focus more, you see the tree there start to kind of move and split down the middle, and you notice it's not one really big, big tree it's actually two smaller trees that were kind of really close to each other but as you look at them more more you kind of trying to figure out how you thought they were one tree because they're (coughs) obviously two separate trees and as you look at it more and more they're really far apart like they're good like four five feet apart doesn't make sense that you would think there were one tree as the last <laughs> remnants of illusion kind of wash away and you can see a very d- dark kind of weed infested overgrown uh, d- deer path going th- th- through these tr- tr- trees what do you say onward I mean, either that or we just completely ignore our promise. Uh, Onward. I pull out my sword and start heading that direction. Doesn't take you very long. You you get to the... um, uh, You walk maybe 30 feet down this path and you come to this massive tree. It's easily t- t- 
10 feet in diameter, but it is misshapen. And like the, the tree itself, instead of growing uh, kind of straight and, and upwards with the branches coming out, it almost looks like it bubbled out of the ground. There's like boils and, and the tr tree itself is very b b bulbous. It almost has like a gut t t to it. And the closer you get to it, you can smell the sickly s sweet smell of uh, rotting f fruit and vegetation. As you get a little closer, you can also s smell something is definitely t t died around here. Like maybe a, a, a rat or a s squirrel or something. Not something l l large. But if you've ever s smelled a t decomposing s s squirrel or something, you never f forget that scent. And once you're about t 10 feet away from it, the t tree itself, it has branches, but they come out at uh, odd angles. Uh, there isn't any real... Uh, leaves or anything coming from it but you do see these overly swollen pieces of fruit that look so overripe and hanging so low you, you think they're just about ready to f fall off does it look like this tree is big enough to house something inside the trunk or is it just like a normal well, it's size? 10 feet in diameter so yeah it's huge but it's not very tall it, it only goes up about 12 13 feet high um i'm gonna do i know what type of tree this is or why it looks the way it is or like that? hold on uh, argent and lillian you're t talking at the s same t oh. time Roll 20 rocks. Uh, start with our Argenta. What were you s s saying? Uh, I was saying, uh, do I know like what type of this is or why it looks this way? Roll in the nature check. Yeah. Um, 24. Um, looking at the tree, it is not a t type of tree you're f f familiar with with but whatever kind of tree it is it's sick it's very very sick this would be the kind of tree that even in Fenrish would have been cut down hmm. I relay that to the party then Lillian what, what were you s s saying I have feeling um, about how far we have you about in that area. Well, the place they uh, came out is literally th 30 feet behind you. Oh, uh, uh, You guys are really, really close to it. I'm just gonna. I'm, I'm gonna do the dumb thing. I'm gonna just run, or not run up, but like walk up and touch the tree, see if it reacts. Okay. Um, make me a c con save. Is this disease related by chance? It, it is. Uh. Yeah. Let's let's c call it th th that. I only ask because I get advantage on disease. Yep. Thank. God, too. I rolled an 11 and it became an 11. <laughs> uh, as you s sit there and you place your hand on it, you instantly feel s sick. Your s stomach wretches. And before you can stop yourself, you just lean over and empty the c contents of your s stomach on the ground, which I don't think you had breakfast or did you? Not yet, but I'm glad I didn't. Yeah, so you you empty the little uh, remnants of your stomach that there are, and then dry heave a, a, a little bit. As you get up, your vision s s swims. You take one point of uh, 
necrotic damage. Um, and as you guys l look at him, um, <coughs> even without being able to see his f face and everything, like you could see his arms are limp at his side. He's kind of swaying as he s s stands. I would have pulled the mask up when I was puking. Oh, yeah. So you guys can see his lips, while normally uh, ebony in color, are now this kind of pale gray. And you can see little specks of yellow and white on them. Uh, um. And um, Henri, uh, you have uh, the poison condition. Uh for the next hour. I will uh, walk up to Henri and say, are you okay? Don't, don't touch the treat. <laughs> start backing away. It's not good. I will put my hand on him. Mm -hmm. uh, As you touch him, your s stomach starts to retch a, 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 a little bit. And you feel nausea coming up, but it's not qu quite enough to o overwhelm you. But you do realize there's something very wrong here. If simply by t touching someone affected by it, there's a reaction. All right, I'm going to attempt not to throw up into my mouth and uh, cast Lesser Restoration. Okay, roll me a c concentration ch check. Okay. That's a constitution saving throw, right? B basically, yeah. Aiming for a t t 10 or higher. Nine. Okay. <laughs> As you sit there and you, you f focus on the spell, you feel like right at the back of your throat. You, you f feel it right there. You're going... And you kind of force it down. You t touch him again to finish the casting of the spell. And as you feel the magic f flow out of your hand and into him, Henri, you start to feel better, though you still have a bit of a f flop sweat. Vala, all of breakfast is on the ground. But afterwards, you wipe your mouth. You kind of feel better too. That kind of relief you get after throwing up things you don't need inside you. Oh, does that remove poison? Yes. Oh, I, I'm. I'm just going to use press I'm, without looking. I'm going to use press the digitation to clean up the vomit. Okay. Uh, roll me a dex save, Henri. You as well. Uh, 17. Okay. Natural one. <laughs> Vala, as you sit there and just um, cast the prestigitation, you instantly feel something is wrong. And you hear this bubbling sound, and without thinking, you just ch jump backwards. Henri, you hear a bubbling sound. You're still not feeling great and are re recovering. And you just turn and... <laughs> all over your r robes uh, since your mask was uh, up still all over your face and your nose and your uh, eyes oh I immediately start throw it, trying to throw up if garbage got to him then this definitely gets to him <laughs> I'm gonna take a few steps back now this tree I really don't like this tree can we just can we just do Operation Vala and just burn it. <laughs> How? <laughs> Sorry, you guys were talking at the same time. Oh. What was that? Lillian first is time. I did say that. So, me. And Argenta? How high up are these fruits? Uh, they're about ch ch chest level f for you. They're hanging r really l low. Alright, I was just gonna chop one off with my great axe and see what happens when it hits the ground. I'm gonna put my hand out and try to stop him. 
Okay. Uh, <laughs> both of you make straight dex checks for me. Let me see who's <laughs> faster. 22. 15. I saw Argenta, you take your axe out, you start to swing, and Vala's hand c- comes up and just stops right on your hand before you can c- complete the s- swing. You can kind of push past her and keep swinging, but she was able to kind of warn you before you finish this swing. Uh, I'm not raging, so I just kind of halt and I'm just like, what? <coughs> hey, you you, you want to pick one of those fruits? I will uh, hum a little and move my hands and cast Mage Hand and okay. pluck one of the fruits off the tree. As soon as your Mage Hand closes around it, uh, the fruit itself bursts. Mm-hmm. This uh, horrible rotten stench c- comes out of it. Suddenly you guys Fuck. hear the s- sound around you ch- ch- changes. And as you sit there looking at the husk of the fruit just sitting there d- dripping w- what looks almost like entrails. You hear this buzzing s- s- sound, and you see a little kind of wasp-looking thing come out of the f- fruit and just start going around, and then another, and another, and another. Soon there's a swarm coming out, not just the hanging fruit, but the p- pieces on the g- ground. You can't really t- tell where these th- things are c- coming from. Because they sh- shouldn't be able to just up here. But they are. Uh, I need everyone to, to make me t- deck saves, p- please. Okay. okay, I will probably not have noticed as I'm driving still, so I'll gladly do it with this advantage. Okay. Uh, 21. I think I'm cursed, guys. <laughs> oh. I gave myself disadvantage, and it went from a natural two to a natural one. Okay. <laughs> right, so Argento, what was it? Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Okay, Vala. Eighteen. Eighteen. Okay. Lillian. Thirteen. Okay, and uh, Henri's a one. So, Lillian and uh, Henri, you take eighteen piercing damage as these things oh. just start swarming and stinging you everywhere. Is it 18? Uh, 18, yes. Uh, okay. Argenta and Vala, you take half of that, so nine piercing damage. Liliane and Henri, you also, everywhere that you are stung is numb. So, um, uh, since they primarily got your arms and t- 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 torso, um, any ch- checks you make using your hands uh, for the next t- 10 minutes will be made with. T- disadvantage oh. the bees are s- still s- s- or the wasps are s- still s- swarming ar- around you guys you see the fairy has backed off to the f- uh, clearing now I'm go. I'm just going to start running towards the fairy I've had enough of this tree okay. I am going to use create bonfire <laughs> on the uh, the fruit on the ground okay uh, Argenta, Lillian, is, as Vala's doing that, are you d- doing anything else? I'm going to raise and start chopping the tree with my great axe. Okay. L- Lillian? Oh, what are they doing? Vala's making fire, because Vala. Uh, Argenta's <laughs> ch- chopping the tr- tree w- w- with her axe. <laughs> Because our Genta. I will take out my one sword. Is that the way is why to help us get Okay. Vala is your bonfire erupts. You hear the bees actually kind of scream, this high-pitched scream. And there's still a few left, but as you kind of move around the bonfire, you're able to 
coax most of them in there. Argenta and Liliane, as you guys go, when your axe sinks into the wood, you're expecting wood. And that's what you've... You've chopped trees before. But when you get into it, this feels like flesh. And as you chop into it, this unearthly, almost demonic scream wails out of somewhere. You can't tell where. But it fills your ears. Uh, Val, you as well, like your head starts to just throb from this unearthly sound. And Lillian seems uh, so put off by it that she just stops moving. There, there she goes. Um, uh, y- you all are just overwhelmed by this loud sound. And I need everyone but Henri to make me a Hans save. I'd probably fail it if I had to make it. Uh, uh, Argenta? 27. Okay, Vala? Uh, only 18. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> what are you guys rolling? I have my good set now. <laughs> Argenta, do you have... What's your save bonus to con? Oh, you're barbarian. Yeah. You get con saves. Um, yeah, you guys both kind of hold your head, but you're able to kind of sh- sh- shake it off. Uh, Liliana, con save, p- please. Uh-huh. And Argento, would you, do you mind just re- refreshing the page f- for me? Yeah, I can I can hear Liliana now. Oh, you, you can? Uh, yeah, I hear you everywhere oh, now. Excellent, good. Seven, uh, you... Okay, okay, so you hear uh, when Argenta and you both kind of cut into the tree, you experience the same thing as Argenta. You're expecting wood, but as you cut into it, it feels like flesh and bone. And as soon as you cut into it, this unearthly wail goes out, and you have to cover your ears. Your head starts to throb, but you're able to kind of sh- sh- shake it off. Henri, you hear the uh, scream, and it's really loud, but it doesn't seem to affect you as uh, readily as as it does them, but it immediately almost forces you to turn around and look. And as you all look look at the tree, the tree is now recoiling away from you. Do we know if this is a... How far away am I from them? I just I don't know about how far. Thirty feet. You had basically one t- turn of movement, okay. so about thirty feet. You're in the c- clearing now. I'll start slowly walking forward, and I'll be like, "Do we know if this is a hundred percent an actual tree?" <laughs> Logic would dictate no. I am so confused. I mean, I have a way I could find out, but I'm probably burning a spell. As you guys are sitting there, you can see the tree is now not just actively kind of leaning away from you. It's undulating and moving. You can see ripples going across the the tree, and it looks more fluid and gelatin than solid wood like it looked before. And suddenly you see one of the branches start to swing towards you, and you see one of the pieces of fruit uh, detach and come flying towards you. It lands in between Argenta, Vala, and Liliane. And again, you see the wasps come out of nowhere and start buzzing and, and attacking and stinging you. Uh, I need an, another deck save. Once I'm within 30 feet of the tree, I'm going to cast Blight and see what that does. Ooh, it's a save, right? Yeah, con save. What's your spell save? That is a good question. I want to say 16. Yeah, 16. It f- f- fails. But just uh, barely, because it actually rolled a 16 and has a negative con. 
if it's a plant, it just does maximum damage or a magical plant. Uh, but if not, then I will actually roll it in here. I mean, technic. I didn't create a t- type for it. So yeah, let's let's say it's a plant ish. Uh, if it is, a plant, <laughs> it it's a plant, was a p- plant at one point. If it is a plant, it takes 64. If not, then it takes that much. Okay. Necrotic damage. Uh, d- d- deal with that in a second. Uh, Argento, what'd you get? Uh, deck save? Y- yes. 14. Okay. Vala? Uh, natural 1. Uh, all right, Lillian. Seventeen. So Lillian, you take half of t- twenty-five, so t- twelve. Argenta and Valo, you both take t- twenty-five p- piercing damage. And the bees are still swarming, but as you sit there, you suddenly hear an even louder wail than before. And I need um, uh, con saves from Argenta, Valo, and Lillian. Die. Okay. Uh, 20. Okay. 8. Alright. Alright, so Argenta, you again, your head throbs, but you kind of sh- shake it off. You watch as Vala and Lillian as they grab th- th- their heads, they just kind of stay there and their eyes get all glossy and you guys are s- stunned f- for the next m- m- minute. However, Henri, right. as you kind of focus on this blight, um, how do you want to do this? Oh. <laughs> Wasn't expecting death. <laughs> so I learned at level 7 and never got to use it. Uh, I just want the tree to just... Like, uh, like it was a victim of the snap just start disintegrating and turning into ash. Okay. So as you sit there and focus, you you extend your hand and you see this little pathway of of, uh, kind of rotting uh, foliage just start leaving from you. And it kind of snakes its way around everyone. When it gets to the tree, you watch as these pustules grow on it and they burst and suddenly it's writhing and screaming, and then you see it just kind of d- disintegrate into t- t- dust as it slowly m- m- melts and, and goes up into this kind of big pile of ash and, and pus and uh, other th- things. Vala, uh, or Argenta, Vala and Lillian are preoccupied. You notice the... Uh, Wasps start screaming as well and just kind of fall to the ground and t- disintegrate as well. I really did not like that tree. Henri, as you, you look, you notice some of the t- t- dust kind of keeps f- falling f- further than the g- ground. As you get a little bit closer, you can see there is some sort of opening un- underneath where the tr- 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 tree was. I'll send uh, some dancing lights down. Okay. They kind of disappear sh- sh- shortly. It s- seems that there's an I- incline that kind of s- spirals t- t- down. Large oh. enough for... It'll be a little tight f- f- for you. Um... But it's large enough for a medium-sized creature to go down. Well, I'm going to back up and wait for them to be coherent. I'm waiting, too, because I'm fine. So you go over and you guys kind of slap Val and Lillian a little bit, get them back to their senses. You guys eventually get back. Your heads hurt so bad right now. And you can feel like your, your mouth is bone dry 
on the back of your throat kind of burns like you've just th thrown up. Even there's a little burning in your n nose. And you can smell am ammonia. Yeah. So we got two options, you guys. Hmm. We can either see what's down that spiral staircase of tree death right now, or we can wait until we're all coherent and not numb. I mean, I could, I, I could use a short rest. Yeah, me too. Where's, all right. where's the fairy as, as all that was going on? You look around, fairy is nowhere to, to be seen. Just be like, I think the tree problem's gone if you're here. And so we just, I want to go back to the clearing she brought us to before we rest. I don't want to rest right next to this tree. Well, Ash. Yeah. Really? Well, why n n not? Touching the tree led to me taking a vast amount of damage from bees. <laughs> I don't like this. So you guys go back to the clearing. You s s sit down. Vala, um, you start t taking out just some sows and stuff just to try and deal with the stings. You actually find you guys have multiple stingers in you. Despite the fact that Waz don't lose their stingers when they sting, somehow these ones t did. Uh -huh. And f from the amount of stingers you had in you, there are more stingers than there were wasps. Uh -huh. So it takes you the majority of the hour to get rid of these stingers and and kind of heal up, but eventually you get most of the feeling back in your fingers. They still have that kind of a sleep buzz to them every so 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 often, but for the most part they're working again. You no longer have disadvantage. Lillian, the same is with you, though. Knowing you, you might want to keep some of the stingers. Yeah. yeah. I, I will also, uh, while we're doing that, I'll do my song of rest. Okay. So anybody that uses uh, hit dice will also get back a whole one extra hit point. You know, that's kind of funny. I was at 70 of 71. <laughs> so that <laughs> I, was at, I was at 98 out of 99. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are just saying that to make me feel useful. Thank you. I thought it was a d d6 they got. Was some I, rest. I, I rolled a d6 and rolled a one. Oh. <laughs> if they each get to roll their own die. No, that's f fine. That's hilarious. <laughs> yep. Oh man, am I glad I learned blight now. That tree was annoying. That was fantastic. I wasn't expecting you guys to grab the desiccated f fruit. Mayhem! <laughs> I thought it would be safe. <laughs> Isn't it about c curiosity? Um, said he killed the outcast. Apparently. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. It's an inspiration for that. That was amazing. <laughs> um, yeah, so an hour passes. As you guys look, uh, and you've kind of been watching, the dust itself has been getting darker and darker. And it's started looking kind of sticky but you're 30 feet away so you can't really see that much but it's definitely over the past hour ch changed uh. where the tree was yeah oh goody do do we want to clear a path oh we have to yeah all right, everybody, stand back. And I will start using... Um, uh, yeah, I'll start using uh, Create Bonfire to 
scorch a path through the dust. Okay. Uh, so as you get close to it, before you cast the bonfire, you, again, get that sickly sweet smell of rotting f fruit. As you get close, you see the uh, dust has started to fester like uh, an infected wound. But as you sit there and, and burn it away with crepe bonfire, um, in, instead of it smelling like you would expect uh, either kind of a charcoal -y smell or like a burning tree smell, it smells like meat. Really bad, rotten meat burning. Mm. But you are able to c c clear a p path. Uh, while I'm doing that, I'm also going to uh, use fresh vegetation to add like a mesquite smell to it. <laughs> just a faint odor, just to try to make it palatable. Uh, have you ever t tried mixing air f fresheners? Yeah, yeah, it's not going to go very well. Yeah, <laughs> basically, now you have mesquite f flavored burnt flesh burnt you're rotten f flesh you're, you're amazing Vala everything. Yeah. I really regret not casting death ward before we finish that rest this will be fun <laughs> alright so we have a path um, oh well, I'm not going first down there I'll go first or, or I can um, how stealthy are you? Oh, I'm, I'm not... fairly stealthy. Alright. I'm pretty Here. stealthy. I'll, I'll go first. And as I walk away, I'll cast invisibility on myself. Okay. So you guys watch as Vala steps forward and then she's gone. But you can see her footprints leading towards this opening. Vala, as you start heading down, the first thing you notice, it is pitch black down here. Uh, do you have night vision? I do have... Uh, or dark, dark vision. vision, sorry. Yeah. Um, as you go down, even with your dark vision, it seems unnaturally dark. And it's hard for you to make out things more than about... 10, 15 feet in front of you. But after tra traveling down, which feels like at least 15 to 20 feet, you eventually c come to a landing and you're in a relatively large room, about 20 feet on a side as you kind of go around and map it out. And there is a uh, uh, archway going off from it to, to, to the west. Okay. I would have followed in about 20 or so feet behind. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, me too. So as you all get to the bottom, uh, does anyone not have t -t dark vision? Um, <laughs> yeah, I believe I did not. So, our Gent and Lillian, you guys are completely blind. No oh, no, I have dark vision. Oh, you do. Sorry. Lillian, you are c completely blind. I can keep dancing lights up if you need it. Okay. Uh, uh, well, they would have f faded during your long rest, but you can recast them. Yeah, because it's drow things, so I can just keep doing it. Okay. So, as you c c cast them... Uh, you guys suddenly notice something you couldn't with your dark vision. The walls have paintings on them. Does this look similar to the place underneath uh, Dorme, but not as finely crafted? Uh, c completely d different. Okay. These, th those uh, almost seem like they were built in an age long ago. There's kind of like a Parthenon feel almost to it. You know, that just really old, really well done 
carvings and embossings and that. This looks f f fairly recent. Um, it c can't be more than maybe a few months, a, a year maybe. B because of how h humid it is down there, some of the paint is actually s still somewhat damp. Um, not really wet, but it just never really dries because the humidity is too high. Um, I want to look at the painting. Sure, or the sure. what, like, parts of it. Sure, make me a perception check. Uh, uh, 20, not natural. Okay, so looking around, you realize if you look closely... You're going to see very s small individual paintings of just very macabre, dark uh, images. Like one is a uh, uh, very poorly paint painted, like decomposing body. Another one is like worms eating an apple. Like none of them really make that much sense. But when you back up and look at everything as a whole you can kind of see that they f fit together to f form one l l large uh, picture, which is a s symbol that looks obviously vampiric to you, but you can't recognize it. Mm. In the vampire language, or is it just a symbol? Um, I'm not finding anything for in the vampire life. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> the hell was that? <laughs> My Siri <theory> activated. <laughs> 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 Here I thought our pixie friend got a new voice. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Everyone taking spirits. That was so funny. Ah, uh, um, it's it's obviously Van Pyrrhic. But be because it's a symbol, not a word, there is no t t translation f for it. So I couldn't read it with my uh, Eyes of the Ring Keeper thing? No. Okay. But or... looking at it, you, you can recognize it is like the sh shapes and everything are t taken right out of the vampiric alphabet. It's just mm. it's it's a it's a symbol, mm. kind of uh, like the the clan s symbols. Mm. But this even that because uh, Argenta, you'd know qu quite a few of the different house symbols, and Henri, obviously you know a few of them as, as well. Um, this isn't even a house crest or s s symbol, but it's s s similar. And that's I'm as gonna, c close as you can get. I'm going to take time and try and draw it as best I can so we have like some reference of it. Okay. Make me a perf performance ch ch check. Uh, you recognize as vampiric. Uh, I get it's, it's four. It's kind of like seeing um, a logo f for a business that's made up of letters. You yeah. might be able to pick up the letters, but it's still just a random sh shape. 24, and I'd more than likely be writing it in my Book of Shadows. Yeah, so it takes you about f five minutes to just jot down and pretty decent detail um as you write in your book of shadows suddenly the the, the page f f flashes 
Jesus. And as you're looking at it, you watch as the, the page itself seems to wrinkle and then seems to d disintegrate like it just become very old and the whole page just t t disappears. So this I think is what's causing this and I'm going to um, Bala see if you can rub that uh, mark off with something that's not you touching it. Well, again, the the symbol is created by all these little pictures, mm. kind of like if you've ever s seen those big pictures of all the t t tiny pictures in them. Gotcha. We probably try and deface this somehow because it just destroyed a page in my book for me copying it. So I can only guess that this is somehow related. If you'd like to roll an arcana check, you can try and f figure out. Oh, Jesus will go well. Oh, hey, natural 20 with a plus zero. So looking at it, you, you know, your book of shadows is, is not a normal book. Um, you specifically use it to store spells and rituals. So the paper is not normal. The, the ink you use is, is all of it is, is arcane. And you've copied s spells into it before. Um, and so what you th think possibly happened was whatever that s symbol is, is a p part of a s spell your book c couldn't handle. And so it's simply just destroyed the, the page instead of being re recorded the way it normally would. You think probably if you'd used a less arcane thing, you probably could have written this symbol down but because that book is specifically forecasting spells it tried to cast the spell basically knowing that i'm going to try and use one of my since i have like three prayer books i'm going to no i'm going to use something that isn't a prayer book that seems blasphemous i'm going to just find something to write this on that's not arcane or anything in nature mm -hmm. Uh, sh sh sure, you can rip a, a, a page out of s s something and just write it down. And once you do it on just regular p paper with, like, ch ch charcoal, uh, it, it's there. Okay. This is interesting. Yeah. And there was a Nat path going to... tells the... you a lot. Uh... There was a path, one path that kept going. Uh, yeah, in the room again, it's about twenty by twenty. Uh, on the west wall, there's an opening in a hallway. I will whisper to Henri, "I'm going through. Give me twenty seconds." After and then the I will. Air, I will be okay. <laughs> and then I will walk through the west door, stealthily. Roll I'll, me a stealth ch ch check. I'll quiet like while being invisible. Um, that is a sixteen for stealth. Okay, you walk through the door. The humidity of the room seems to get a little heavier as you walk through the door, and you keep walking. You have five to ten feet. And your limbs start feeling heavier. And you start noticing, like, your arms are now c covered in... It kind of feels like sweat, but it's too h humid for you to actually s sweat. So you almost get the feeling this is some sort of c condensation. And as you take one more step after realizing that... You smell iron? I start backing out. Okay. You make it back to the room without t t too much difficulty, but that scent of iron is still in your nose. You don't smell it anymore, but you can just... It's just there. 
So, question. Am I now just a Vala-shaped field of blood? Or, since I'm invisible, or... Uh, t- technically, anything you're holding is invisible as well. I drop invisibility. Uh, as you look at your, your arms, they're little red droplets all over you. And your uh, clothing now has a distinct pinkish color to it. Guys, I don't like this place. I don't like it at all. I think I might ascend in my life first, see what it happens. I can make him look like a person and like he's walking in there. Yeah, the, the, there's, there's blood floating around in that room. This is very similar to that place underneath Dorme, but bigger. Yeah, that was what I was afraid of. Something else. So, yeah. I'll have... I gotta see how far ahead dancing lights can go if they're all merged. Of me. Yeah. Yeah. I believe it's at least 20 or 30 feet. Yeah. Light must be within 20 feet of another light, but if you merge them to look like a humanoid, I don't know. So I'll, I'll just... Speed it should have a range on this spell. Uh, 120. 120. Yeah, so as long as it's within 120, you're fine. I'll stay about 40 feet back and just make it look like a humanoid walking into where Vala was after okay. describing that and see what happens if anything pounces on it. So as it goes further, what's the range of your dark vision? Um, mine is 120. Okay, yeah, so you can see it fine. As it goes, you notice that it has this... What c- color is, is the, the, the light? Uh, they'd be uh, symbolic as the, to the guiding beacon as possible, so probably like a bright whitish. Uh, the guiding beacon tr- traditionally is associated with like a yellowish sun c- color. We'll go with that. Okay. So you have this kind of golden uh, light start going down... As it gets further and further, it starts changing in color and gets kind of slightly orange-ish and then pink and then darker pink. And eventually, after it's about 40 feet in the passageway, so for you, it'd be 80 feet away from you, it's a deep red at that point. Is it just one hallway that it was walking through? Yeah, it's just a straight hallway. And as it gets to that 40-foot part, you notice uh, something metallic on the other end. But it's far enough away, and your vision is obscured by whatever is in there. You can't really tell. You just see the glint of light reflecting off metal. Uh, I will, if I'm alone, I'll holler back, or I guess I'll... Well, t- technically, you're in the room with everyone else. You're just l- okay. looking at your d- d- dude. I'm going to go forward a little bit and see what that metal is. Uh, d- Do you want to go into the hallway or d- just at the e- edge? Yeah, I'll go about 20 feet in the hallway okay. and then move my little guy like another 10 feet or so forward so so as you step into the hallway again the humidity gets heavier and as you walk forward you start feeling your limbs are heavier and you start feeling your arms getting wet and even your face underneath your mask is getting wet and as you get there you can see uh, your guy has come to a little opening maybe like seven and a half feet it's a small circular room maybe seven and a half feet eight feet in diameter not very large but the little bit of metal uh that uh is reflecting off it you can't really see because as you look there's like vaporous like a red mist or fog it's stopping you from seeing completely. But you can see it looks maybe like a, a sh- shaft or 
something s similar. It's 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 long, obviously, and it's made of some sort of metallic m m m material. Um, roll me a perception ch ch check. Uh, Eighteen. As you s sit there and you can smell iron really s strongly, but you also notice there's a sound and it takes you a couple minutes to realize it sounds like a tr trickle of water f f flowing or multiple uh, s small tr trickles of water f f flowing and landing in a pool of s some sort and that's I hear that coming from in front of me <laughs> yes uh, the entire time my uh, light humanoid was walking mm -hmm. were there any markings on the wall no. Okay. The walls itself look very roughly carved out of the the natural uh, uh, ground and stone and everything here. You can actually see a few roots and things in the uh, uh, roof from t trees far above that have really deep roots. I'll go back to the group. I'll dismiss the light guy. Okay. Tell him what I saw. And heard. I mean, um, the only way to go, unfortunately. Well, we were doing that. Um, I would have taken my sword out mm -hmm. and um, and I did my one and dog so it's okay. radiant. And I would have so that's thirty feet bright light, thirty feet dim, right? It's a t torch, basically, as far as light is concerned. Um, I think so. Um, yeah, we'll just go with that. Yeah. So as Henri comes back. You kind of get a flash of light as you see this kind of brilliant white light radiating from Linan's sword. And as you kind of point it in that direction, you can s s see this kind of red mist gets th thicker and th thicker as the c cave go goes on. Uh, and you're actually able, again, to see this slight glint of metal at, at the end. Because it's only about 40-ish feet to that room. Oh, all right. Argenta, do you have any torches on you? Yeah. Do you want to throw one down the hall and then we can have Vala light it from afar with whatever you Wait, can? Wait, what? It's going to be soaked in blood. Uh, I'll just pull out... Um... I'll just pick a rock up off the ground. Well, I was mainly because for the um, weight to see if it sets anything off near the metal that I'm going for. Right. Uh, I I lift up a piece of rock. I cast light on it. Wait. Before I do that. Let me just try to remember here. Nope. Light does not appear to be concentration. So I will cast light on the rock. And then I will cast Mage Hand. I'll have Mage Hand hold the rock mm -hmm. and have it carry it down what color do you make your light uh white white okay so again as it goes further it gets redder and redder but once it gets about 20 or 25 30 feet in um the light starts hitting whatever the metallic object is and you start seeing a lot of reflection that's coming through this red mist making it even harder to see kind of like if you put your brights on in f fog. Okay. So, um, Henri, what did you want me to try putting this on? To put it on the ground where the opening first comes out, just to see if something happens, trap, whatever. I will use Mage Hand and set the rock down on the ground. It sets down. Should we try moving the pole? can 
I mean, I did read about this thing called trap magic. <laughs> I, I've heard of that. I will have Mage Hand grab the pole and attempt to pull it. As the Mage Hand uh, uh, c- grabs it, nothing like nothing moves. Okay, so does it pull back? I try. Yeah, the Mage Hand can only do about t- t- twenty p- pounds, so anything heavier than that or requiring more than t- twenty pounds of force, it's not going to do anything. Okay, so yeah, the Mage Hand can't move it at all. Even like a heavy door would c- c- cause issues. So. Right. Okay. Are we doing a moment for um he did a symbol? Yep. I will take my sword with the radiant the, the radiant damage and try to defeat it somehow. So you sit there and t- take your sword and start t- t- dragging it th- 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 through uh, one of the paintings. So you get close, it, it almost looks like an oil painting. Like is that kind of thick, sticky paint. And as you t- drag your sword through it, it kind of sparks and almost looks like it's setting on fire. But not really as the radiance goes through it. And you carve up one of the paintings... And you guys uh, hear this kind of moan from the room. (laughs) Can I stop? (laughs) As you stop, you hear the moan again, this time louder. There's someone here. And you just hear even louder. And this time, there's a motion behind it. As you guys are kind of sitting around, the next one isn't a moan. It's a yell that all of you have heard before. It's a yell of someone in pain. Uh, Similar to when we were hitting the tree? (laughs) No, that was just unearthly. This literally sounds like someone's getting stabbed or whipped or something. Uh, I just mm-hmm. is going to close her eyes, pull her bow out, and focus on the screen as I shoot an arrow off. Okay, make a, uh, an attack roll with disadvantage. Okay. 17. Okay, so as you sit there and try and pinpoint it, you shoot an arrow out, you hear it impact something, you hear an even louder scream that's a mixture of surprise and agony, then you hear more screams coming from there. Seems like at least three distinct voices. One of which is slowly getting weaker. Are they coming from the room we're in right now or from down the hall? Down the hall. Okay. Well. So do we want to try and destroy more of this? Remember. (laughs) If we do it, are we causing pain to whoever is there? As you guys speak more, you hear more screams. You suddenly start hearing almost words. But it's like someone's trying to speak with like a full mouth or something. Remember in Dorme, when we went in there when somebody was dead... It tried to take us into the machine, and it only stopped when they died. Right. I'm going to try something weird. Um, The direction we're hearing, I'm going to try casting message and just say, do you need help? See if anything responds. Brilliant. Uh, You get back. 
just almost gibberish it's so fast help help please help it hurts so much help help please it hurts well there's definitely someone down there I start walking down the hall again okay I'll be behind Bella. as you guys get there you see this very strange almost skeletal looking device it's got these like spears coming out that are connected in this bizarre way. It's got th- three uh, uh, different uh, kind of large sh- shafts um, that are connected s- s- centrally in like a, a, a inverted tr- tripod. And on each one of these, there is uh, a sh- humanoid bound and pierced multiple times with all these different spears of things made of uh, what looks like a, a lectrum. Hmm. But, I see they found a use for it. Uh, uh, Vala and, and Henri, both, both you guys would know, electrum is somewhat of a soft metal, so this there has to be something else in it as well that's giving it some strength. But you can see uh, three humanoids almost completely naked, um, except for some modesty covering, a loincloth, and there's two men and a woman. The woman is wearing a uh, kind of a covering uh, uh, over her as well, but the rest is just there, and you can see these, like, uh, cuts in all their skin in these arcane symbols that are b- b- bleeding. And you can see one of the men has an arrow p- protruding from his ch- ch- chest and he's b- bleeding rather heavily from it. And they all are just kind of s- screaming in pain because they're impaled. And the spear actually goes through their uh, uh, the bottom of their uh, mouth and out, which is why they c- c- can't s- speak. Uh, you can see t- tears t- streaming t- t- down their f- faces. I, I'm no expert, but I don't know if we can save them. Looking at the t- t- damage the t- t- done, um, all of you are r- relatively certain they don't have v- very long t- t- to live, and even r- really p- powerful healing magic is not going to f- f- fix this. They probably have about f- five to t- t- ten more minutes. And in order to actually s- save them from death, you would have to take every single thing p- piercing their s- skin out and heal them, and you just t- t- don't have the t- t- time. I'm going to w- cast a message on whichever one looks more composed than the others. I know they're all freaking out. Mm-hmm. And just ask... There's nothing, not much we can do aside from tell your family what happened. You would again get g- g- gibberish of just help and it, it, it hurts. They they seem beyond the point of t- yeah. too much r- rational th- thought at th- this point. Well, I think we have to do the right thing. You guys s- suddenly see... Uh, the, the one with the arrow in his chest just kind of s- sulk a little bit and s- slide down and s- stop m- moving. I'll just... I'll tell everyone to back up and I'll just send an Eldritch Blast at each of the others. Okay, that is f- force damage. J- j- just FYI. Oh, that is a good point. I'll do t- Toll the Dead on one. Okay. I know that's cruel, but... It's... Well, necrotic damage is slightly different than yeah. bludgeoning them t- to death <laughs> so you guys hear this kind of tong and you watch this skin turn black uh, on, on one of the corpses and you hear this final kind of sigh and they s- stop screaming the woman s- stops s- screaming I'll shoot an arrow at the man because at the same time to make sure it happens at once yeah so now being able to see your target you just aim f- f- 
for the heart to make it quick. Let it go, you have no problem hitting it. And you watch excessive amounts of blood come out as the heart just ends. And they slump down as well. Um, You guys notice there's a large pool of blood below them, and that's where the trickling sound was coming from. And as they all kind of stop, you see the red mist starts to clear up. The humidity level goes to a more normal level for this part of the world. And the whole room gets a little bit colder. Um, was the metal we were seeing just faintly, just coincidentally, one of the Electrum Spears? Yes, that's what was reflecting. Again, it's not just a spear, it's an entire kind of tripod contraption made of Electrum and something else. Some sort of alloy. And -hmm. it's really, it looks almost skeletal with all the things uh, connecting one another but it's really elaborate. And there's actually parts that move on it, and the the bottom is actually a basin to c- collect the blood. Like, it's really elaborate. I'm going to send dancing lights all throughout the area we're in just to help it's people. It's really small. Again, it's only about eight foot in diameter. So okay. all you guys being in there is really <coughs> cramped. I just figure whoever wants to look around because it's not my specialty. I'm going to look around for uh, a symbol of the bloody uh, thing. So, what are you looking for? For the symbol of the bloody thing, that like thing that I found at the last one. Oh, on the brick. Yeah, uh, as you. Look around, you don't see any symbols in here, but you do see, uh, now that the red mist is gone, you do see a string of runes on the floor that leads back through the passageway into the room you guys were in in before. Was that all of that, this room, was that contraption? Yep. All right, I'm going to start heading back into the room with the painting. And it does look very s- similar to what you found in Dorme, but dif- different. Mm-hmm. I'm going to very carefully start policing the bodies. Okay. You d- do notice as you look at them, the d- d- device is t- designed in a way that you can actually t- t- take everything out. It's not like one s- solid piece. There are little parts that fit in. You are able to t- take all the little spears and things throughout their entire body and get the b- bodies o- o- off it. Oh, 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 Okay. Okay. Argenta, Henri, I think. Henri, you said you were going back to to the other room? Yeah, I wanted to go back to the room and see if anything changed on the mural since we... uh... As you look around, they look the same. Uh, Argenta? I'm just following Henri. Okay. So, yeah, it doesn't really seem like anything changed other than, again, it doesn't feel that oppressive humidity that was there before. As you drag your blade across, you notice now the paintings aren't reacting to your blade anymore. It's just like you're carving through oil paints. Whatever you did the first time broke this. 
Oh. Um, life cycle, please. Surprisingly not mine. Uh, thinking yeah. back to what happened in Dorme, when we were in the map room, mm -hmm. I am going to uh, focus and inspire Argenta. Okay. Now, with this, like, the map room and everything was technically underneath where you f found the uh, thing in right. Dorme, and it was a s separate room that was massive, like 50 foot high, hundreds of feet long. Here, there's nothing that looks even r remotely l l like that. All right, I'm just wondering, I'm just uh, on a far chance that maybe I might get a tinkle. Mm -hmm. As you do that, the inspiration works the way it's supposed to. Henri, you have what, a d d d8 now? I believe a d8, yes. Yeah. You have a d8 <laughs> of v v inspiration. I think that was all that there was, unless we want to... I'll start feeling the walls for potential passageways. In the As you place your hand on the wall, uh, it kind of sinks into the, the, the oil, and you just... It feels g g gross. And as you p pull it away, you notice there is p pigment and oil in there, but as you p pull it away, you also get that strong iron smell. And you realize whatever the paints were, blood was mixed into them. I cannot wait to find out who's responsible for this. I just go back to the sacrifice room and I tip over the bowl of blood. <laughs> uh, as you d d d d do, uh, and uh, uh, the, the blood starts to pool on the floor, it immediately starts to just kind of d dissipate and, and evaporate. Almost as if you poured it onto like a uh, frying pan or something really hot. Kind of sizzles and burns away and then there's <laughs> nothing. I'm going to head back up the uh, little spiral walkway and see if the land around the tree were because you said it was like, looked like it was, he had to burn a path to or she had to burn a path mm -hmm. to it. I want to see if it stopped or looks healthier. As you g get up there, whereas before the like d dust where you d disintegrated it, kept like coalescing and, and like sticking to itself. Now it's like, it's just <sighs> there. Still kind of damp like leaves with dew on them but it's not like sticking to itself anymore or anything like like that like before it almost seemed kind of alive almost now it's just sticky gross stuff I really don't know who's responsible yeah Which, you, you look over though you look at the where the uh, clearing was and while the flowers and everything are still there it's no longer the colors aren't quite as b b bright and it fits in much more with the rest of the surrounding area whereas before it just stood out like almost something a a alien do I see the uh, pixie that was with us anywhere nearby no Okay. I'll wait for everyone else up top. Okay. I'm just gonna knock around the floor and the walls just to see if I get any hollow sound. <laughs> nope. Seems p p pretty s s solid. Alright. So I'll head back up. Alright. Once you guys get all back, you all also notice now the ground is just d d dead and the clearing is much l less bright and vibrant than it was b f before. Should we bury these bodies, or? It's the least we can do. I would suggest burying them not near this 
no. God's Forsaken Tree. No. No, I agree with that. Yeah, go. So without t too much difficulty, since they were pretty emaciated, you're able to bring them up and you go a few hundred f feet away to more healthy c ground. T t takes you about an hour to, t to dig the holes and put the bodies in and then close them back up. Do you guys want to leave any <laughs> markers? Um... They didn't give me their name when I tried. Right. I'll uh, gather some rocks. Okay. Uh, yeah. make, a little, make a little marker. All right. So you guys make f f three unnamed gra graves. Well, I think we should go back and let the fairies know. Maybe they can see if the tree is still sick. We can, we can try them. I wonder if they're still there. Yeah. Yeah. That was a good point. It might have been like a reverse dorme where instead of being taken else being taken from here to elsewhere, they were taken from elsewhere to here. And if we fix that it would reverse it. Yes. Yeah. To that point that kinda makes me wonder if whoever did this was in the Feywild that brought it here instead of doing it here that brought them to us. If that makes sense. Like it was, yeah. That's what I'm kind of thinking now. I don't know about the the one in Dorme. That one could have been the opposite or just coincidence. Right. Yeah. Let's uh let's keep our eye out for anything suspicious as we make our way yeah. back to the, the pixie den. All right. So it takes you about thirty minutes to find it again because. And she went on that weird pathway. Yeah. As you guys get back there, the f fairies are still there. But there's this kind of air of t t tension. As you guys get close, the, the lead fairy comes up. What did you t t do? I, I don't think the tree's sick anymore. But it's broke it. It's, it's, it's not there anymore. We didn't. We merely took the band-aid off. No, there was no, something no, done to it before th us. That. Before we, we could feel home. It, it wasn't there. It was very f faint, but we could f feel home. And so we thought we could c go back. But now it's c c gone. I have a weird question, Jody. Sure, sure. Would I know if I cast Banish on the Pixies, would they go back? Or is this a special circumstance? Ooh. Um, I don't know if I would know that because I just learned it at level 8. That's a... F um, so, 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 as part of learning this spell your understanding of it because when you banish something from your own plane it puts it in a p pocket dimension right unless they're not native to the plane yeah. then it... I'm only f focusing on things that are n native yeah so in your mind as you learned it that's its only use is creating a pocket dimension and banishing something there because again there's no interplanar tr travel uh, if you were to cast it on, on like a, 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 a blood elf actually f from the sh shadow fell um, it wouldn't work c correctly uh, from your no knowledge of it. does that, that make sense, sense? yeah so you again since the planes have been cut off or 500 years no one has actually cast a spell on something from another plane because they're dead by now um, and any thing descended from a planar creature technically this is their home plane so you're if it works the way it's supposed to you'll just 
banish them to a p pocket dimension. Hmm. However, these are actual <laughs> interplanar beings or beings from another plane. No one has used this spell that way in f f 500 y years. I can propose that to the fairies, but I can only do two. If it, if it does work, I can only do two before I have to rest. And then do them two, two an hour. <laughs> yeah. I, d I don't know, because I don't know what will happen. It could work. It might not work. We can well, always touch. We don't want to be separated since we can't go home now. We can't stay here. It just after every thing that happened, it just doesn't f feel right. Can you can you tell me more about the fact or why that you saw? Was it colorful? Was it loud? It's just. It's just very p p bright. We all had to c c c close our eyes. Then we were in the clearing with the, the bad tree was over there. And so we c got away from the bad tree, but it all happened in an in, in, in instant. There was a machine under the bad tree that was um, siphoning the blood out of three individuals. That's f very bad. I'll show them. Uh, which is why we had to. Which is why we had to destroy it when we did. I'll show the fairy, the lead fairy, the copy of the symbol that I drew. She, she looks at it and goes, "You shouldn't be playing with that." That's p p bad. We don't know what it is. This is what was responsible for uh, that machine, from our understanding. Th that's sh sh shadow f f magic. F very bad. C creatures from the sh sh shadow fell. They're no f f fun. They're always so sad and m m mad. Not like us. We don't like p playing with them. What kind of creatures are for the shadow fell? Well, there are many c creatures in the shadow fell. D -d Dark, evil c c c creatures. Sh shadow fell is an endless s s sea of d d darkness. There are evil c c creatures that come from the water with t tentacles. Sometimes they don't have form at all, and they just slowly surround you and draw the life out of you. They hate light. And then there's there's dark elves. They they're not all bad, but a lot of them are. And and there's so many bad things around them they, they don't smile because smiling w would mean they're having fun and it's not f fun in the sh shadow film. they have massive f floating c c cities lots of ships lashed together it makes it harder for the evil dark sea creatures to eat them Mm. I feel like the more we try to understand this, the more confused we're going to be. I don't th think you should go to the sh sh shadow fell. Oh. Unless no. you want no. to get to t Tartarus or or Elysium. You, sh you should go to the f f Feywild. It's much n nicer there. You can go to the elemental p p planes. Those sound like fun. I am just very confused. The creatures that live in the elemental plane of water, they can <laughs> they change their shape 
like water. They're never the same thing for too long. They're a lot of fun. Really good at hide and seek. Mm -hmm. Are you able to travel between the planes? Not now. Mm. But the Feywild is the center of the outer planes. The elemental planes each have a front. You can cr cross right from the Feywild into the f elemental plane of fire or, or earth or w water or air. Mm. <laughs> Okay. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, though, the Verdant M Empire has been at war with the elemental k k kingdoms for, for so long. So c crossing bet between the at the elemental fronts is dangerous. You you might get c caught up in in a battle. Mm. The war forged from the scorched t dominion. There really rough. They're always fighting with the ladrant. Can you... I don't know if you will know that, but... Do you know if they make you a slayer in the play of fire? Sorry, what was the question? I didn't quite get it. Do you know if they use Slavery in the plane of fire. Do they use what in the plane of fire? Slavery. S slavery. Uh, c c question. I haven't written that p part. Um. Well, I'm just wondering because of what, um, the people of the bay told that they went through. They did, they were that they were for the war. Well, p p prisoners of war be put into work camps and th th things like th that. The, 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 um, sh what are they called? S somebody help me out. Uh, it's a race, they're elemental. Uh, an Aussie? Yeah. Freaky? What, what? You freaky? No. You freak? The Genasi? Genasi. There we go. Genasi. Oh, okay. Uh, the Genasi are, are generally a, a, a under class. They're not s slaves as, as much as just a servant c c caste. So they... They, they might consider themselves slaves, but they're not owned by, by anyone. They just have limitations on what they can t t do. Like the mm. fire genasi serve the war forged. Well, I, if you don't think you can get home anymore, you're welcome to Follow us until you find a place you want to stay. B bad things tend to f f follow y you. We can t t tell. <laughs> I can recommend a few places where you won't be bothered by people. We'll look ourselves. Again, we're f f very w well versed in uh, f finding nice places and before the planes were c cut off, p p Pixies used to t travel all, all the time here to p p play with humans. I'm sh sure s someday we'll be able to c c go back. Just, if I may ask a favor, mm -hmm. no more games pretending to be children in trouble. Sure. Those are not fun games. Maybe not for, for you. <laughs> anyway, we're going to go now. There's no reason to s stay here. There's too, too, too many people here that get upset about 
games. I kind of wave over the head fairy and I'm just like, we got off on the wrong foot, but the vampire seems to have been using blood magic to mess with the plane, and you seem to have fallen victim to that. Remember, the vampires did this to you. Okay. We heard tales of an entire city that worships the god of tricks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That would be... Oh, uh, how far we uh, oh. We'll find fun. it. F- f- looking for it is half the f- fun. All right. It's somewhere on this world. Here, and you watch her kind of fly off. She comes back with a little acorn, and she p- places it in your hand, Vala. Okay. This is for you. Keep it s- safe. I will. And I did promise you this. I hand her over one of my vials of the Cunning Rascal Healing Potion. <gasps> We're going to have fun. And she just t- t- darts off and t- t- disappears into the f- f- forest. Okay, so I have an acorn. Mm-hmm. Question mark. Yeah. Something about it feels s- s- special. Hmm. Mm. I will just hold on to this for now. Okay. Anything else you guys want to do before you t- t- turn to your c- c- camp's site? Oh, there are came where they have See this cry to me. I will still be there. It seems very similar. The, the right. difference being you didn't get t- t- taken anywhere. Yeah. But obviously yeah. whatever c- creature you, you dealt with was not native to the, this plane. So you, you think you've heard the, the other side of the equation. Like you experience what happens on this side, they experience what happened on the other side. Uh, 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 Anything uh, else? Not in particular. Right. So it takes you guys, like I said, about 30 minutes to get back back to your campsite. The commander and preacher are there kind of looking at you like you're crazy, wondering where you've been. (laughs) As as you guys are talking to them, suddenly all of you feel hairs on the back of your neck stand on. And you hear this incredibly loud popping, cracking sound as you are all thrown to the ground and this brilliant indigo light splits the sky. You you, uh, hear this kind of screaming and and, and yelling as you hear the phrase, This one is mine! And suddenly, uh, I'm going to... Uh, Argenta, a, a yeah. large armored figure comes f- flying out and lands on t- top of you, wearing f- 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 full ch- chain mail, like heavy armor, and he has this strange g- gauntlet on his hand with c- claws c- coming out of it. Uh, Henri, as you're s- s- sitting there, you see this very s- small sh- human uh, girl come f- flying at you wearing f- f- furs and she l- lands on you. But as she lands, or as she gets closer, she gets p- p- bigger and bigger. You see f- f- fur s- sprout from her skin and suddenly this kind of p- petite girl has turned into a f- full c- c- 
grown uh, large predatory cat that lands on you. The panic I cast death ward. Before you can do that, that is where we are going to end for tonight. Uh, uh, everyone that tuned in or is, is watching is, is, has always m- missed any of the episode I h- upload all of these to my y- y- YouTube channel youtube.com slash trainer Jody check it out there uh, n- next week I would normally run my uh, other c- campaign but we're having a very s- special episode where t- two members of my other c- campaign are actually going to, to, to guest star in the, this uh, campaign. So t- tune in next week at uh, 9 p.m. Central Time and watch my very first c- c- crossover e- episode. Otherwise, th- th- that's all for me. And I'll see you guys next time. All right? Bye-bye.